A while ago, I made a small video explaining how my company, Titan Lab Incorporated, is consulting to a UK company called Body Rocket. Body Rocket is trying to do aerodynamic sensing a bit differently by making the first direct force drag sensor. Uh, actually actively measures the horizontal force. Now, I haven't been making videos regularly, especially this past year. It's been quite a difficult year for me. And well, it didn't have the impact that I wanted, but not only that, it did generate a few questions and criticisms, and I kind of wanted to address them. I think the first criticism was that the body rocket system can only measure drag of the rider and not the rider and the bike, like you would with an actual wind tunnel as it sits on the top of the plate. And while that is true, the thing you have to think about is you're comparing it against pitot tube drag estimators, which they themselves can't actually measure drag force at all. So this leads me to an important thought, and we, we've got to recap a little bit here. A real wind tunnel uses its own pitot tube and basically a big extractor fan in order to have a closed loop control system to maintain a targeted speed. Once it's at and stable with that speed, the wind tunnel has a load cell or some have a force restoration balance, which is a much more accurate way of measuring forces, but the load cells are still really good. Uh, to measure the horizontal force of basically anything that is mounted on top of it. The body rocket load cells, uh, they can work basically anywhere. There's nothing stopping them from taking them and taking them off the handlebar and saddle and putting them below the wheels and validating it against the wind tunnel. But that's just validating a load cell and there's frankly a lot better ways of doing that with calibration fixtures. What it does allow is testing in a wind tunnel to correlate things like the rider and the bike compared to the combined system. So it, it gets to allow you to extract those elements from one another. Future Keith here. I just wanted to do a little explanation of how you would do a basic validation with the body rocket system. And that is you would run the bike by itself and then run the bike with the rider. And the body rocket system will only see the rider and the difference of the first and second run would therefore correlate should be a, the same additional drag. Now there might be a little more to it because aerodynamics are complicated, but that's pretty much the basics there in case you uh, didn't catch that from my last video. Now in the real world, what's the most important thing that you can do or change while you're on the bike? Well, it, it's only your positioning and being able to be fed back that information and hold your position, that's pretty valuable for competitive athletes. Now let's compare that to how you would use a pitot tube drag estimator in a wind tunnel situation and test it. Imagine the wind tunnel again. We have our pitot tube and our control loop, our straighteners, our diffuser, and then we take our rider and their equipment and their bike, and we plunk them down on top of the load cell. Now that rider's going to need a little bit of resistance, so we're gonna to have to kind of plunk them onto a trainer. And since it's just a bike trainer, I guess we can control it. So the pitot tube concept is based on Newton's second law. Some of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration. And inside the wind tunnel, we're not gonna have any appreciable mass chains, and we're not going to have any change in acceleration there locked down to that load cell. Uh, there's not going to be any slope or elevation gains. So we're basically left with the sum of the forces is equal to the aerodynamic drag. I'm drawing out the failure point here is that now power and the wind speed and thus the aerodynamic drag, those are two completely independent things. I can remotely adjust a smart trainer and it's not going to affect the wind speed within the wind tunnel. That's controlled entirely separately. And if you have that, now power is equal to zero and because it's therefore meaningless in that equation, well, your aerodynamic drag is zero as well um, from that perspective. And that's the limitation here is that the only real strongly controlled environment that we have in order to measure aerodynamic drag being a wind tunnel, you don't have 
a way of testing this out. So that's why I tended to refer to them as pitot tube drag estimators, because once you take it all away, it cannot measure aerodynamic drag force. And if you can't measure the force, it can't calculate a CDA. I'm bringing up power meters again because these pitot tube drag estimators really heavily rely on power meters as their data source. I shouldn't have to remind people, but I'm going to do it anyway, that the last few years we've seen an incredible race to the bottom in terms of quality and accuracy and not a significant change in price either. So uh, a handful of companies have maintained quality and, and thus have increased prices. Um, a handful of companies, or I should say one company, has uh, taken an interesting strategy with how they deal with power meters and OEMs. There are a lot of brands out there that really haven't done themselves um, any favors for the long term. And basically, if you are at the point where you're searching for a power meter, especially um, newer ones, and you haven't seen a new review on a Rainmaker site, dcrainmaker.com, or uh, Shane Miller's YouTube channel, uh, GP Llama. If you haven't seen reviews for your, what you're looking for, like modern reviews, not just, oh, it, it's the same tech on a different crank. If you haven't seen reviews for the generation of cranks that you are buying on, you really need to be wary because if you don't see one, you can bet they're probably hot garbage at this point. And we've recently seen um, what happens when you're probably the richest company in industry and you're on your third generation of continuing hot garbage that's overpriced. How does this all play back to the whole pitot tube drag estimator? Well, it's a computer program. It's garbage in, garbage out. If you can't trust the input to be accurate enough, if it's variable, if it's always consistently too high or too low, and then you have a much, much, much more complicated algorithm. You know, the whole saying, well, you know, if it's it's 5% high, it's always 5% high. That doesn't play here. There are nonlinear things in all of these models. And when you get nonlinearities, 5% up on your power meter can do very weird and bogus things randomly to that whole model for your losses, for your rolling resistances, for everything. Or if you're a left only, like this is basically useless to you because pedal asymmetry through so many variables uh, changes. Your left right balance is not consistent over fatigue or positioning or inclines or, or time of day or the moons of Jupiter. So how could you test a pedo to drag estimator. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I think most companies have been doing uh, track testing so that they have repeatable landscapes. There's no or minimal elevation change. Uh, indoor ones have controlled temperature and there's no sun. And they have to be, probably have to be very particular about which power meters and, and taking care of them. And you know, showing up one day with a left only and showing up the next day with a spider and showing up the next day uh, with different pedals, like it's not going to fly for consistent usable numbers. If you actually want to do something with aero canes, uh, that's probably not how it's going to work because I mean, if the power meter is the, is the loose brick in this wall, they've been getting looser. There are a few other methods that I, I've heard of, such as using a, a disc or a sphere, and you mount that offset from the bike and kind of go in a straight line, and you know the theoretical drag for that element, and you do a bunch of A, B tests back and forth. And eventually you realize that if your theoretical aerodynamic drag, your CDA, is supposed to be 0.1 on that sphere, and you know that the difference of on and off is around 0.1, then I think people are going to pat themselves on the back and, and call it a day. And, and that seems like a potentially decent way of doing it. But it's also realistically a very difficult way if things start moving around or, or actual how, how you would mount. Or, you know, maybe you need to measure the force on that beam to make sure you know what you're, you're measuring. So short of basically making a big remote controlled bike where you're measuring current and voltage to, to a drive motor and maybe have a torque sensor in line, um, 
that you validate it to to a very high level of accuracy that's very high speed like short of building out a controlled an ultra controlled bike that you can run in an ultra controlled environment i don't see any other good methods the the sphere method is probably or disk sphere method is probably one of them going to be kind of one of the last bastions for people like reviewers and i think that's one of the, the great difficulties is why we haven't been seeing reviews of the handful of systems out there is there is no way of testing it um the difference being with the body rocket system there is a way of testing it with a wind tunnel and a little bit of man so so that's all i have for you today i just wanted to kind of follow up and clarify some of the the questions comments and mainly criticisms on um the system you know there are two very different paths here and and most people have been going down this one path of um, aerodynamic pitot tube drag estimation using a pitot tube to get wind and try and fill in the blanks and, and do a bunch of math that relies heavily on a lot of flawed parameter products that are currently in the marketplace whereas body rocket has taken a a very difficult um and but different approach and it does have a path to validation in a wind tunnel whereas the pedo tubes not so much so with that thanks for watching